Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux xargs command is used to send batches of arguments to a command. So the command would be run for each batch of arguments. Now, why do we need this functionality? Well, this was created to solve a problem. So <clears throat> commands can only support a limited number of arguments so that that limit is based is a system limit or an OS limit. Now, since, since commands can only support a limited number of arguments, you could run the, basically you could either pass a bunch of arguments to one command instance, or you could run that command over and over and over for each argument, but that would be horribly inefficient. So it would be really slow and inefficient to run one command Per argument so you want to kind of avoid both of those cases so you want to be able to split your arguments up into batches and run it with as few commands as possible for you know for efficiency but at the same time you know you have that limit for the number of arguments that a command can take so xargs basically handled handles this for you it will take arguments split them into batches and pass them off to the command that you specify um in as few times as possible as uh as it can so the behavior of xargs so we're, we're, we're going to show you this in just a second but the behavior of xargs it takes a list of items from standard input and it is passed to the command in batches the default command is going to be echo and the batch size that, so that's system defined so Let's start out with a really simple example just to show you the syntax and like how it works. So sequence 1 through 100, that'll just generate a bunch of numbers, right? So assume those are your <clears throat> arguments being piped from a command. Usually you're going to have something more useful in a real world scenario. But pipe this to xargs. So pipe this to xargs. And there we go, xargs just by default, remember, it echoes it. So the only thing is it just echoes out each of these values. So that's the basic usage of xargs. Now, we, we're going to say, let's, let's do a slightly more useful example. So we have a directory called data1 with a bunch of files in it. So you, you could say, find... You can say find data one and pipe this to xargs. So by default, this is just going to echo out every file found in this directory. It's going to echo out the directory name and every file in there with the actual path relative to where I am now. So we could actually work with these paths. So yeah, by default, it's just echoing. So we, we can also use this to do something like say grep and grep for error like this. And you can basically, this will basically just grep for the word error in every single one of these log files. Now you could just do a recursive grep, but this is just an example. There are multiple ways to do the same thing. So let's see, we can also do an RM to remove each one of these files. Now, everything is removed except the directory itself. So it gave us an error saying cannot remove data one. Everything else is gone. So next example, we can do say find data two. We have another data directory and we can say print. Well, let's first try this without that. Let's say X, xargs rep error like this and we, we actually run into some problems here you see the word more in info log no such file or directory so if we look inside data 2 you notice there is a file that has spaces in it now this is one thing I wanted to show you xargs won't handle file names with spaces correctly so you have to use the the dash zero option, it can be used to split on nulls rather than spaces. But for that to work, the command that pipes in 
a list of uh, arguments has to separate them using nulls as well. Now, luckily, the find command supports this as well. So I'll, I'll show you how you do that with both of these commands. So for the find command, at least the GNU version of the find command, you can say dash print zero, and that's going to split that. That will now delimit this list of file names by nulls. And now you can say xargs dash zero, and that will basically split up the arguments based on nulls. So now this works. So now you see we have this log file with spaces in it, alternatives, more, info, dot log. We're, we're able to work with that now. So that solves that problem. Now we could also, so rather than just grepping, we could gzip all of them. Let's say if we wanted to gzip all of these files, we could say gzip and we can say dash p to run in parallel. And the uh, so, so essentially when you when you run a, a dash p by default it's one. So one is the default value. That means it's only going to run run gzip once at a time, only one process in parallel. So that that's going to be kind of slow. You could specify more. You could say five, five, fifty. 100 or however much you want. If you want to just use the max number possible, you, you could just specify zero. So zero will give you the max number of processes running in parallel as it can support. So let, let's give that a try. So um, let's, let's see here. So gzip p zero on error. Now th this should run a bunch of them in parallel. And actually, that is not correct. I kind of need to specify this before, right here. Dash P zero. Because that's an XARGs argument, not a GZIP argument. Yeah, so this was wrong. This should be correct. So yeah, th this zero is for, um, you know, null terminated delimiting. And this is for, yeah, the number of parallel processes. There we go. Gzip, gzip. All right, so this seems to have worked for most of these at least. And there we go, everything is gzipped, including the file with spaces in it. So that worked perfectly, just as we had hoped it would. And I'm, I'm actually not sure where this is coming from. But um, but this is because it, it lists out the data, the directory itself, and it can't gzip the directory itself. But this, I'm actually not sure where this line is coming from. So let's see, one more example I wanted to show you, just just for some of the syntax. That's that's most of the useful stuff. Seq one five. Let's just do a sequence like this, right? Now let's pipe that to xargs, and let's say dash i like this string and then say echo like this start so what, what this is going to do is for every argument passed to xargs you're going to say you spe specify a dash capital i string and that will let xargs know that string is where you want to substitute in the the uh, argument that's being passed to it. So now you can run echo, and you can basically put whatever parameters you want, like a, a parameter here, a parameter here, and it knows that that keyword string is going to be where it substitutes in that value. So let's run this and see right there between start and end, it put each of these arguments that were passed to it one through five. So right here between start and end, it put each, each of those right there, string. And it knew to replace string because we specified it here in the dash i parameter. Now, um, another thing you could do, you could say, instead of piping, normally you're almost always you're using xargs with piped input, but it is technically possible to say xargs dash a and read in from a, a data file, like for example, my 
list.txt. Now this file doesn't exist. I'm not going to actually show this as an example, but you could use that and you could say um, like rm or you know gzip or whatever you want to do with it. That that's another way you could use it. If you like, you know, collected a list of things together over time and carefully adjusted the list and you wanted to use that, you, you could use xargs with a list in that way. Of course, you could also just cat the list out. And I think most people would probably do that because it just makes more sense. But um, it's one fewer command and one fewer pipe. So there's that to consider. And a one last thing I want to show you is echo dev null xargs show limits. Now this will show you the limits on your system. So xargs show limits, your environment variables take up, you know, these many bytes. Postfix upper, upper, upper limit on uh, this system. So this is actually pretty high. So yeah, it's like 2 million, right? This is, uh, yeah, that's, that's over 2 million. Minus a certain about, so smallest allowable, allowable upper limit on argument length, all systems. Okay, yeah, in any case, this is, you know, just in case you're curious, you're still going to use xargs in the same manner, and you're probably not going to be counting the number of arguments you're going to send over. If you're sending over an unknown number of arguments, and you know it might be a large list, you should probably use xargs and don't question it. That way, your scripts won't break in the future when someone runs them or when you run them with an unexpected amount of input. So, yeah, honestly, I'd not we even bother to check these. If you're using a lot of a lot of input and the, the size is unpredictable, or if it is predictable and it is just really large, just always use xargs. It's a, it's a good habit anyways, unless you know something's going to be a small number of arguments. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover with xargs for today. Remember, check the links in the description for more info. Hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on that next video.